Hello everyone. Our job for today is configuring Ether channel. Three switches have just been installed. There are redundant uplinks between the switches. Usually, only one of these links could be used, otherwise, a bridging loop might occur. However, using only one link utilizes only half of the available bandwidth. Ether channel allows up to eight redundant links to be bundled together into one logical link. In this lab, you will configure port aggregation protocol, a Cisco Ether channel protocol, and link aggregation control protocol, an IEEE 802.3 AD open standard version of Ether channel. Part 1. Configure basic switch settings. Step 1. Configure basic switch parameters. Configure all required ports as trunks, depending on the connections between devices. Note that if the ports are configured with dynamic auto mode, and you do not set the mode of the ports to trunk, the links do not form trunks and remain access ports. The default mode on a 2960 switch is dynamic auto. Part 2. Configure an Ether Channel with Cisco PAGP. Note that when configuring Ether Channels, it is recommended to shut down the physical ports being grouped on both devices before configuring them into channel groups. Otherwise, the Ether Channel misconfigured may place these ports into error disabled state. The ports and port channels can be re-enabled after Ether Channel is configured. Step 1. Configure port channel 1. The show interface's trunk command displays nothing because we have just disabled the trunk ports. On both switches, add ports. F0 slash 21 and F0 slash 22 to port channel 1 with the channel group 1 mode desirable command. Configure the logical interface to become a trunk.
Step 2. Verify Port Channel 1 Status. As you can see, the port states are down, so we must re-enable the physical ports using the no shutdown command. Part 3. Configure an 802.3 ADLAC PE Ether Channel. Step 1. Configure Port Channel 2. In 2000, the IEEE released 802.3 AD, which is an open standard version of Ether Channel. You must use a different port channel number on S1 than 1, because you already used that in the previous step. To configure a port channel as LACP, use the Interface Configuration Mode Channel Group Number Mode Active Command. Active Mode indicates that the switch actively tries to negotiate that link as LACP, as opposed to PAGP. Step 2. Verify Port Channel 2 Status. Part 4. Configure a redundant Ether Channel Link. Step 1. Configure Port Channel 3.
on Switch S2, add ports, F0 slash 23 and F0 slash 24 to port channel 3 with the channel group 3 mode passive command. The passive option indicates that you want the switch to use LACP only if another LACP device is detected. On Switch S3, add ports, F0 slash 23 and F0 slash 24 to port channel 3 with the channel group 3 mode active command. The active option indicates that you want the switch to use LACP unconditionally. Statically configure port channel 3 as a trunk interface. Step 2. Verify Port Channel 3 Status Port channel 2 is not operative because spanning tree protocol placed some ports into blocking mode. Unfortunately, those ports were gigabit ports. To restore these ports, configure S1 to be primary root for VLAN 1 or set the priority to 24576. Here, we configure S1 to be primary root for VLAN 1, then configure port channel 1, 2 and 3, using three different methods, port aggregation protocol, link aggregation control protocol, and redundant ether channel link. That's all for this activity. Thanks for watching.